This chapter in the phlebotomy handbook is going to cover professional ethics, legal, and regulatory issues. In class, we will have activities to cover this chapter with a very brief lecture. Again, this is the chapter objectives that will be covered in this course. Laws versus ethics. Laws are so societal rules or regulations that are advisable or obligatory to observe. So an example of this would be traffic laws. Um, there's a pre-selected speed limit for certain areas. For example, in a school area, the speed limit's 20. That is a socially regulated law. Laws protect the welfare and safety of the society, resolve conflict in an orderly and nonviolent manner, and consistently evolve in accordance with increasing holistic society. Um, this basically means that as a society changes, we might change the speed limit in certain areas. We might decide to regulate different type of laws, for example, concealed carry law, to update with society's changes. Ethics are the moral standards of behavior or conduct that govern an individual's actions. For example, the doctors sign a Hippocratic Oath basically stating that they will do no harm intentionally. Bioethics, bio refers to life, are the moral issues or problems that have resulted because of modern medicine, clinical research, and or technology. This bioethics, a good example of this would be stem cell research, um, the use and um, ability of cloning as well. Ethical check, this is legal or does it comply with institutional policy? Does it foster a win-win situation with the patient or supervisor or other individuals? And how would I feel about myself if I read about this decision newspaper? How would my family feel? So this is the ethics check us as healthcare workers will go through to determine. There is gray areas in ethics, which makes it very difficult. Can I live with myself after making this decision? Is it right? Patients rights, all members of the healthcare team recognize that their first responsibility is of their patient's health, safety, and personal dignity. Therefore, the American Hospital Association Patient Bill of Rights, titled Patient Care Partnership, was instated. Key elements in patient rights include high-quality hospital care, clean and safe environment, involvement in patient's care, protection of patient's privacy, and help when leaving the hospital. Therefore, we evaluate the patient to see if they need any type of therapy outside the hospital or if they need help in paying their bills what will they need once they leave the hospital that they may not have been able to do for themselves prior to coming into the hospital? Help with the patient's billing claims. Governmental laws, there's the legislative branch. Written laws are called statutes and are made at the federal, state, country, and local levels. I'm sorry, county. Executive branch makes administrative laws. Judicial branch establishes case law that is based on legal cases from lower level judicial branches. The laws governing medicine and medical ethics complement and overlap one another. And healthcare consumers and patients have become more aware, more critical, and more willing to sue anyone whom their lawyer believes has been at fault, including healthcare workers who are collecting blood specimens. As you see many commercials on the TV advertising for accident lawyers. Negligence. This is a violation duty to exercise reasonable skill and care in performing a task. An example of negligence would be the doctor was supposed to perform a surgery on the left side of the patient's knee and therefore perform the surgery on the right side or left instruments or equipment inside the patient. The following key points must be considered in alleged negligence cases. The duty, the breach of duty, foreseeability, Proximate causation, injury or harm, and damages. We will be having very detailed case studies to use those terms in class. Malpractice, improper or unskilled care of a patient by a member of the healthcare team. So the doctor who forgot the gauze inside the patient might be held with negligence and malpractice. Any professional misconduct or unreasonable lack of skill. HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Credited legal requirements for protection, security, and appropriate sharing of patients' personal health information. We The use of electronic transfer of patients' medical information is a major part of HIPAA. We sign a consent for every hospital visit, every doctor's office visit, to remind us of these rights. 
HIPAA again is Patients' Right and Consent, Healthcare Workers' Confidentiality and Non-Disclosure Agreement, maintain the confidentiality of all patient information, and its computer sign-on code secure from others' knowledge. Confidential materials in the healthcare field include communication between the physician and the patient, the patient's verbal statements and medical computer entries on patients, and nonverbal communication such as laboratory test results. This would be considered nonverbal because we may not physically talk to a person, but we would get a paper result. Confidentiality and HIV exposure. State law regarding confidentiality and HIV status varies from state to state. If exposure to the blood occurs through a needle stick, a skin puncture device, and other means, the home health care worker needs to obtain the patient's HIV status and other information about potential infectious disease to ensure that proper, immediate, and long-term self-protective procedural steps can be taken. This is covered by liability insurance if you are working they will test you. There is no cost to be tested for this. If employed by a healthcare facility, the healthcare worker should follow the guidelines established by the facility. And if the healthcare worker self-employed, it's important to monitor his or her own HIV status and counseling should be sought. There's a standard of care. All healthcare workers must conform to a specific standard of care to protect patients. Examples of setting standard of care is statutes, licensing requirement, rules and regulations of regulatory or professional organizations. For example, as phlebotomists, our standard of care is to provide care regarding to the patient's blood draw. The patient needs to be transferred out of bed. The patient needs to be transferred from a wheelchair to the bed, even if we were a certified CNA, that is not under the standard of care for phlebotomy, and we will go over this in detail in class. Informed consent, voluntary permission by a patient requires signature of approval. Informed consent is performed prior to surgery, sedation, and any other medical procedures, sometimes prior to blood collection, especially when you donate. IRB institutional research boards. IRB ensures that human subjects do not bear any appropriate risk. They need to sign consent to have any research performed. Implied consent occurs when the patient's nonverbal behavior indicates agreement, exists when immediate action is required to save a patient's life or to prevent permanent impairment of the patient's health. Implied consent differs legally from state to another. Um, Implied consent would be extending out your arm for a blood draw, coming into the ER unconscious. It is implied consent that takes place that you want to be treated. Statute of limitations, a law that defines how soon after an injury a plaintiff must file a lawsuit or forever be banned from doing so. In Illinois, it's roughly seven years. These next couple slides, I just want you to briefly look over legal claims and defenses, steps in the malpractice lawsuit. We will cover these in class in detail. A respondent superior, let the master answer, legal doctrine that holds employers responsible for the acts of employees within the scope of employment relationships. I will give detailed examples in class. Indemnification is compensation for financial loss suffered by the Employees Act. Legal cases related to clinical laboratory activities, so patient falling, hematoma or hemorrhage, abscess or other infection caused by a needle that was dropped on the floor, injuries from fainting, so the patient stated that they were fainting and you as a phlebotomist didn't keep them 10 to 15 minutes after the blood draw and they fell in the elevator on their way out of the office. Nerve damage. The technician chose to draw the basilic vein, started fishing around, and ended up nicking the nerve and artery in the patient. Complications from collecting blood from the cytomasectomy. We introduced infection. The patient got lymphedema. And wristband or ID error is very crucial, but one of the most common legal case related um, to clinical laboratory activities. And I will give you some examples in class. Examples of past phlebotomy lawsuits. I will have you read these. Um, venipuncture performed without proper training, patient death caused by misread glucometer meter, and this is why in class I stress that we do quality control prior to using the instrument, improper blood collection resulting in nerve damage to the patient. HIV-related issues, the healthcare worker must demonstrate a casual connection between his or her HIV infection and other employment. 
This includes documented um, incident report of the healthcare facility involving an aegis stick within 24 hours. The healthcare worker's lifestyle will be investigated to determine whether the exposure occurred elsewhere and pre-employment health evaluations are used. Professional liability insurance, often the healthcare staff in the hospital or clinic laboratory is part of the professional liability insurance policy, and this covers us in case of exposure. These are just some questions we want to ask when we're looking into a job when it in regards to liability insurance the company might carry. CLIA, Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendment, regulates regulations ensure the quality and accuracy of laboratory testing. It essentially applies to every clinical laboratory testing facility in the United States and requires laboratory certification by the federal government. Only laboratories or clinics that perform waived laboratory testing, this is simple urinalysis testing, are not required to undergo an inspection. However, for moderate complexity or highly complex testing, the inspection consider, considers all um, procedural steps in laboratory. This includes a pre-analytical, which is the phlebotomist, the analytical or examination, which is the medical technologist, and the post-analytical, which is a combination of the medical technologist reporting the results to the physician or nursing staff. Some states, including California, New York, and Florida, have licensing regulations and testing requirements that vary according to responsibilities for laboratory personnel. Phlebotomists are allowed to perform point-of-care tests in some states and not others. That concludes Chapter 3. I will provide detailed activities in class to reiterate the topics in this PowerPoint.